That's quite big. Today I'm gonna to tell you all about Boros Hammer Time and why you should play it. Do you like equipment? Do you like big equipment? Do you like suiting up a rabbit with a hammer the size of a semi-truck? Do you like making your opponent say, what the hell just happened if I got the deck for you? Boros Hammer Time is a turn two kill. It is a consistent powerhouse of Pioneer deck that systematically destroys the meta in ways that Watsy could have never dreamed of. And I'm gonna show you how to make it. Let's start with our main card, the Colossus Hammer. He's headed to the ring! Well, you better believe it, Art! It is a one mana artifact that grants 10 10 and loses flying. It's amazing, but its equipped cost is 8, which makes it basically unplayable. Wow. Unless we have something like. This bad girl right here, Cigar to Zade. Cigar to Zade is a one man enchantment that says you may cast artifacts and equipments as though they had flash. And when equipment enters the battlefield under your control, it automatically equips to a creature, which is pretty good. How else are we going to equip the hammer? Well, how about a pump spell that will also auto equip the hammer? Let's talk about Resolute Strike. Resolute Strike is an amazing card. It is a combat trick. It is an equipment attachment. Instant speed, it is everything you'd want. That's how we're gonna equip the hammer and that's how we're going to uh, you know, win the game. Let's talk about the creatures. We've got four copies of Fireblade Charger and four copies of Cacophony Scamp. Now, I know what you're thinking. Aren't these the same creature? And you're right, they basically are. Actually, literally in lore. I'm pretty sure these are the exact same thing. However, comma, this one wins you the game on turn two guaranteed. This one might take a few turns, but this one has haste. So what they do is when they die, they deal damage equal to their power to any target. That includes your opponent's face, which is pretty pretty great. Uh, but this one uh, has a cause that lets it sacrifice itself, which makes it the better card. And actually without this card, I don't think this deck would be viable at all. Watsi is crazy for printing this, honestly. Let's talk about some more creatures and some more Equipment at the same time, we've got Hexgold Halberd and Rabbit Battery. Hexgold Halberd is super relevant. It creates a do when it comes out and it gives our creatures trample, which is fantastic. And Rabbit Battery is great because some of our creatures don't have haste and this grants haste. Also, it's a creature that the hammer can be equipped to. Also, it's a rabbit and rabbits are very cute. Speaking of relevance for Rabbit Battery, we've got Kemba Khan during. See, Kemba is great because as soon as it hits the board, it'll take a hammer and equip it to itself, but it doesn't have haste. But with our cute little rabbit here, that's uh, that's probably just death for a lot of opponents, which is pretty great. It also gives that creature plus one plus one, which is also great. And it can be flashed out. That's the other thing. That's the other cool thing about things like Rabbit Battery, Hexcode Halberd. I think those might be the only two in the main board. But basically, with the Cigar to Zade using the flash with your hammer, you can also flash out this, this creature as a blocker. Or flash this out as a blocker. Like, the world's your oyster. They're pretty great. These are pretty versatile cards. But back to Kemba. Kemba's also great if you decide you want to play a more cat-oriented package. Any other cat that enters the battlefield is also going to get a hammer, which is neat. But she can also pump out cats if you got a bunch of mana in the late game. Hopefully it never gets that long, and you shouldn't if you played right, but it happens. But how are we going to find the hammer? Or how many copies of hammer are we really running? Now I know you see four copies here, but if you look closer, we really have nine copies in the main board. Open the Armory is here specifically to fetch our hammer. If we already have the hammer, it can also fetch the rabbit battery, it can fetch our tramplers, it can fetch a lot of different things, but it's here for the hammer. And fighter class is the same thing. We'll never probably use its level up abilities, but it does find hammer. It's pretty great. We have nine copies of hammer in the main board. Some people are running 10, that being two fighter classes, and some people are actually running this weird combination of three fighter classes and three open the armory. I don't know why. Fighter class is bad, open the army is great, and I think this is the correct number. I do run the second fighter class in the sideboard though, but we'll get there in a minute. A couple more pieces of equipment in the main board. We have Shadow Spear and Maul of the Skyclaves. Now, I'll start with Maul of the Skyclaves, because I don't think it's actually as great as people make it out to be. It's pretty great because it enters the battlefield, auto equips to a creature, it gives him plus two plus two, and it gives him flying and first strike, which is like evasion, it's a pump, it's an ability that is sort of relevant. But it doesn't give Vigilance, so the first strike's kind of bad because you're going to be attacking. And being at 3, the Auto Pants is like fine at best, but like I'm not super concerned about it. 
I don't know. I think I'd rather run Trample or something smaller that gives Trample than a three mana Maul and Skyclaves. But people are trying it, and I haven't had bad luck with it yet, so it is one of the first things I would side out, though. And Shadow Spear, the other reason to run the deck. Um, being able to give your creature Trample for like one is insane. It also gives them plus one, plus one, Trample, and Lifelink. It, it does everything you'd want. It's activated ability of giving your opponents or making your opponents lose indestructible hex proof can come up. I've never seen it come up, but I know it can. We have that in the format. It's just amazing, uh, but you only need one of it. You'll just search it up if you need to find it. One more creature I forgot about, Skrelv. Um, he's a protection spell for us and nothing else, but he's a renewable protection spell. The toxic is irrelevant. Him not being able to block is irrelevant. Um, he also draws a lot of the ire, so he'll get the removal spells before our main threats do. Skrelv is pretty great. I uh, definitely would consider at least running two of him, if not three. Four is too much. He's a legendary creature still, and you don't want to get clumped up. So, finally, final things for the main board. God's willing. Um, the scry is super relevant. Being able to see what's coming next is super relevant. The protection is very relevant. It gets us through their blockers, and it just wins the game occasionally. Sometimes on turn three, I'll have a cacophony scamp suited up with a hammer. I was waiting, and I knew I had God's willing. Uh, I might throw out a scroll in the meantime, and then I have double protection and they just literally can't do anything to me. It's pretty amazing. Finally, we have two copies of Nahiri. Oh, Jesus. How embarrassing. We have two copies of Nahiri, the Unforgiving, and I know those are in Phyrexian. Here's an English one. But yeah, she's pretty great. She is, she'll clone something in your graveyard that you need to win. She'll loot you some cards to help you find hammers if you don't have them. Um, she can also help you set up blocks. And she comes in at three mana, which is pretty insane. Uh, I think that two copies is correct. I see some people running three. I think that's too much. I see people running one. I think you're not going to see her when it's relevant. Two copies feels correct. She's really good for the late game. As far as the mana base, it was super easy to set up. Barely an inconvenience. The only difficult thing we had was to get was three, three mutables. I think three is a good number. Four messes up your colors too much. Even three feels like it messes up your colors too much, but... Uh, that seems to be the right number. Being able to suit that up with hammer and just swing through and then drop a Kembo on the next turn because the hammer's no longer equipped is fantastic. But otherwise, it's a completely normal mana base. We got Pillar Verge Pathway, One Eye Ganjo, Four Sacred Foundry, Four Inspiring Vantage, Four Battlefield Forge, and then like one Plains. It's a really simple mana base. I would actually maybe consider cutting a copy of Battlefield Forge for Mountain, but that'd be like the only thing I'd change in this mana base right now. Just because people seem to run a lot of Field of Ruins, I noticed, and like getting your things blown up and not having another target feels bad. All right, let's talk about the sideboard real quick. It's gonna be a pretty simple one. Two copies of Boros Charm. It has three relevant modes on it. Um, doing damage to your opponent is always relevant. Give, protecting your stuff from board wipes is super relevant. And the double strike, does it feel relevant a lot of the time because our things are our one shot, one kill, but it can come up and it's not a downside to have it on there. The extra copy of Fighter Class I mentioned earlier. I mean, another copy of Hammer is never a bad thing. <clears throat> Two copies of Deafening Clarion, uh, a board wipe and giving lifelink. Being able to do both at the same time, like I don't, I don't even know why you would run anything else. So I see some people running Brotherhood's End and I think that's bad. Especially since your opponents have the ability possibly to recur your spell and then blow up your artifacts. This doesn't even give them the option. I think that's way better. Uh, Sword of Forge and Frontier. I don't know why they printed this. It's ridiculous. And I mean, I'm glad they did. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Rural vehicles literally can't do anything against us now, and it's fantastic. Two copies of Declaration is stolen. Shieldred is a threat, and this is our best path to exile. We don't have another answer to her right now, as far as I can tell. Except maybe like Rebel Salvo, and that card feels bad to play, so I don't, I don't want to. Two copies of Deafening Silence. Phoenix can no longer do anything, which is great. I uh, hate that deck. No reason in particular. And two copies of Rest in Peace, also for Phoenix. I really don't like Phoenix. I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, two copies of Nahiri, the Heir of the Ancients. I think the card is very good for grinder games. You really want to avoid grinder games if possible. You just want to get faster, but if you can't, you have no choice. Her being able to play, put a good dude out who can just like grab the hammer for you or being able to find a hammer or even maybe shock or lightning bolt something is all relevant modes. And is her plus one will always make a threat that has to be answered that turn, which is pretty great. And the final copy of God's Willing, I think protection is something people are overlooking when they're building this deck. They're, they are trying to go fast and so are we, but if you can't protect your thing, it's just going to get dead and you're probably going to get zero value from it. Remember, your curve is super low, so being able to protect the few things you're actually going to be able to put out 
is important. And that's Boros Hammer Time. The most powerful deck I think you can play right now in the Pioneer format for a relatively modest price. I mean, you're only paying maybe $80 in expensive cards. The rest of it's basically chaff, which is kind of nice. I'm heading to an RCQ, hopefully in March 5th. That's the next one coming up in my area. And I think I have a decent chance of winning. And if I don't, I'm gonna have a lot of fun hitting people in the face with the 11-11 rabbit. So if you're interested in seeing any footage from that or you're interested in seeing the deck perform, I'll be posting clips of that as long as the store lets me. And I'll post the link to the deck list down in the description. It'll be a Moxfield link down there. And you can check it out. And if you go scroll on down the Moxfield page, you can see a play test of it. If I've earned your like, please like. If I've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And have a fantastic day.